Okay, so yes, thank you. Always me and continue the. No, not continue. I'm going to 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 talk to you about what we have done so far. What are the next steps we are going to to implement in the next months and the future of the project. So I will start the presentation with this image that was the image that I used the past year to, to close the presentation that was just an inspirational image to say that it's a project with a long journey and many things to do. Uh, so this is an opportunity to see what we have done the last year. Uh, so where we are at so far. Um, so to recapitulate the activity in the, in the last, in the last in the last month, in October 2007, we, we had the implementation of this execution report. This was a contribution of Phil, and it actually was one of the topic of the, of the hackathon. It was a very nice addition to the, to the project because in this report, we are able to track all the metadata, all the statistics, the execution of the pipeline, the CPU usage, memory usage, runtime information, the task, a lot of stuff. It was a, a very nice feature implemented uh, by the community, by the field, by field in this case. Then October, no October, November, November, uh, we added also the support for AWS Batch. This was another project, uh, another topic in the past year academy. And this idea was driven mainly by, by Francesco. Uh, I think at the beginning it was a bit skeptic on the ability to implement this feature. I was not so sure because Nextro had already uh, a support for AWS Cloud that was not getting the real potential on this tool. And then instead, uh, we realized, I realized that it was definitely a, a, a powerful way to deploy the, 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 the computation the product in this environment. Why? Because, well, it scaled much better. Basically, the Amazon Cloud manage all the, the formation of the cluster, the scaling of the, uh, the pipeline into the, the service, everything at the maths manner. So fit much better. Also the design and next flow was definitely a killer feature of the tool. And more and more people started to use this, uh, this feature. Um, what else? In general, it's a little thing, but it's useful. Uh, well, we have the, the support of syntax highlighting in popular editor like Atom, uh, visual code. Also, uh, Nextflow is recognized as proper language into GitHub. It's a, you can see the, 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 the syntax highlighting in this environment. So it's not just the boring uh, nano editor, but there is also better support for, for coding. Then what? February and March, there's a uh, lot of work to to support to have a native support for Kubernetes cluster. This is a very important technology. It's supposed to be the next generation clustering technology for the cloud. Oh, it was very important to, to be able to, 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 to run computational <coughs> workflow in this environment, even though uh, Kubernetes is more a scheduler, is more a clustering engine designed for very generic workload, so it's interesting to see how HPC or uh, scientific workload can work in this environment. And one of the main users is Vladimir, and then later we, is going to, to introduce us uh, on the concrete usage of this technology, NextFlow and Kubernetes Asunder, so something uh, used in, in concrete. Another important uh, milestone the project was TS community and of course TFM along with Alex and Andreas. So I want to clarify this is a different project, it's not next flow. This is a community developed pipeline, a community, uh, community pipeline developed by these people. Um, but I think that is a very important milestone for the project itself because signal uh, because there is a community of people real using this technology to, to implement real world genomic pipeline using production environment. I also realized what was one of the initial vision of this project. So enable other people to implement portable workflow for real workload. So I think it's a very important achievement for, for the project. And um, then in June, 
there was the implementation the Bioconta support. This means that Nextflow is able to, to uh, natively manage uh, the configuration pipeline environment using Jupyter, uh, not Jupyter, Bioconda, pardon. Bioconda uh, environment. But this can be an alternative to use a container. So you can configure your pipeline to use container, or maybe if you prefer to use a container environment, you can switch the configuration pipeline using this approach. Another nice project we worked on in June uh, was the, the support for this specification that is research object. It was a, a proposal submitted by, by Edgar at Google Summer Code, the project was selected, and the idea here is to have a better support for the provenance execution of the computational workflow. And this specification basically allow to capture all the metadata and the provenance information on a pipeline execution in a so kind of standard format. This is an interesting project, even though uh, there are some limitations because I think it's not scaling as, as we were expecting. I mean that basically what it's producing is a big XML file. And when you pop your pipeline execute thousand, even more hundred of thousand tasks, we have this huge XML file that's basically useless, in my opinion. We would like to have a much more agile way to interact with this information. So there is still something to, to be refined in, in this project. Then in July there was the implementation for this standard, the Global Alliance for Genomic uh, Health, uh, which they are designing set a standard to, to allow, to enable interoperability between different uh, platforms, different architecture in this, in this, let's say, in this scheme, in this model. And what is important that this allow an XFlow pipeline to be uh, deployed in a, an infrastructure like this that used by these big consortium like Elixir or the Open Science, uh, the European Open Science Cloud. Um, even though it's important to clarify, this is very, um, I have to say, experimental API, there is an ongoing uh, standard definition, but uh, we can start to, to, to put a fit in this technology, in this environment, I have to say. Then, also in August, we had another uh, refactory of the support for AWS Batch because more people started to use this technology. I had a, a lot of feedback. At some point, we realized that uh, was not scaling as we were expected because the main problem was that the task and submission were made uh, one after another in a sequential manner. And this worked fine with the local execution because basically when you use a local cluster, this is fast enough, but when you're submitting a larger task into a cloud environment like, like, like this, the round trip is very slow. There is a, a, a round trip that slow the, the submission on the task. So the idea was to refactor the, 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 the executor for AWS Batch using a parallel submission, and now it scaled much, much better. Uh, so. In September, we had uh, another uh, nice implementation was the implementation of the support for Nextflow into this uh, project, that is DocStore. This is a um, kind of catalog or registry or computational pipeline uh, using container uh, using the FAIR principle, findable, accessible, interoperable, uh, I don't remember what else. But uh, well, it, it is important because allow Nextflow to be interoperable with these other technology like CWL and WIDO that are supporting the, the, this infrastructure. So it was another nice step for, for the project. And then October, October was an important month. Finally, the, the project changed the license model to Apache. This is, much, uh, this is a permissive license uh, model. Before Nextflow was distributed like, uh, as GPL. The GPL has a lot of subtle um, constraints that make it difficult for some organization to use. But the main problem is when you um, create a derivative, derivative work of a GPL piece of software like it was on uh, Nextflow. And under the clause, uh, the clauses of the GPL also 
a user pipeline is supposed to be a derivative work. So ideally, in principle, uh, any pipeline implemented by Next Two was supposed to be GPL. And some people didn't didn't was not uh, didn't like this idea, and uh, me neither. So at the end, we managed to change also the, the license Next Two to a more permissive license model. Uh, this is much more uh, flexible. Also, we take the opportunity to change the release scheme of the project to a more stable one. And they mean that now we are releasing uh, a stable release every three months, so October, January, April, and July. Instead, we have a, an unstable uh, release every month that contains the latest implementation, maybe uh, experimental implementation, so people can choose to use in production uh, the, the, the stable channel, or if they want to experiment with the latest thing, they can use the H channel. And then another important thing, in October, uh, we also incorporated these companies, the Carol Labs, Mia and Emma. Here the idea is to, how to say, to open the project also uh, to a uh, commercial environment. Uh, why? Because we had the opportunity to collaborate with the organization, but it was difficult in the context of the CRG and the CRG is a research institute. Uh, it was difficult to, 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 to collaborate with uh, company or profit organizations. So the idea was to incorporate this company, which would allow us to open the project also to other uh, environment, environment in which are required uh, special needs for the deployment, and they need special support, etc. And so the idea is to provide with this company. And then tomorrow, Evan, we, we provide a, uh, more, a, a, small, a small presentation about this project. Finally, November, there is still something to add. There is an important contribution that just arrived a few months ago, a few months ago, a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, the uh, book seen as code uh, sent a pull request implementing the support for Google Cloud. Uh, this is really a big contribution to the project because it means that since the, the next release, next we will be able to submit the execution not just in the Amazon Cloud, but also in the Google Cloud. So, lots of, lots of stuff uh, which we we worked the, the, the past year, and this also is reflecting the, the, the metrics of, of the project. The, the, the paper that we published the past year got 76 citations. The, also, the code base increased 35%. Also, with engagement with the, the GitHub repository, but basically it doubled. There are 6650 6, stars, 136 works, and also, above all, with much more download. Downloads are increased 155%, there are something like 40,000, no, yes, 40,000 downloads per month. There are big peaks and slump, but the trend is pretty clear, it is increasing. Also, there are much, many more uh, issues in the GitHub repository, even though it's important to, to specify that most of them are feature requests or uh, questions are not bug. <laughs> not all of them, at least. So there are also um, new contributors to the project. We them from the Quantity Biology Center in Germany, Lawrence from Genome Institute in Singapore, Rad is a guy in Australia, Luke that is also here from Acute Therapists, all of who that contributed the support for, uh, for Google Cloud. And Jonathan is not a, a code contribution, but Jonathan basically sponsored the implementation of the Google Cloud support uh, to the, the contribution of Google CNX code. So there is more people engaged this, in this project, definitely. So what next? What we are going to implement next month? There are several ideas on which we are, we are working. One could be to, to polish a bit more uh, the syntax Maybe renaming some of the, this famous channel factory that are channel from, from path, from file pairs to channel all, all files, all file pairs to have a more homogeneous uh, definition without breaking the existing pipelines, obviously, but giving a, a transition path to, to a new model. And also, maybe changing the, the definition 
of the, the input file from the input file using an input path. Why? Because this would allow to use a simple notation instead of having to specify a file object like it is now. Also having this notation is a bit strange. Input file x from file does not make much sense. The idea would be to have a definition like this in which you have an input part from whatever there can be also a string. Now we have the need to convert this string to our file object. Ideally, instead, it would be uh, possible just to specify a string part. It is would simplify lots of things, especially when the when when you have the need to uh, to parse a lot of uh, input files coming from text file. Now you need to convert basically each part to a file object. So this way would be much simpler. Another idea uh, would be to simplify also the, this pr problem. Yes, this problem is to, to duplicate a channel when you need to use the same data in two different processes, like in this case. If you need to use the same input data in two different processes, now we have to do something like this and create a duplication of the same channel, giving two different names, and then use these two different names in these two different processes. The idea would be to use something like that, an operator like fork, in which you say how many times you need to, you need to fork this channel, and then you, it would be possible to use the same channel in different point. So this will simplify a bit more, will make it a bit easier to use these multiple inputs in, in mul the same input in multiple, multiple processes. Mm -hmm. Even though the, 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 idea, the idea would be even to remove the, the need for fork, giving the ability to use the same channel in multiple processes, but this is a bit more complicated. It requires uh, uh, some changes at uh, low level of the framework that will take more time to be implemented. <coughs> Another, another improvement would be the ability to capture some events of the task execution, like in this case. Basically, the idea is to have some event handler that allows to capture uh, what is going to happen, what happened in the process. For example, if something, say, the process has been executed successfully, or there is an error, or when it's going to terminate, this would allow you to, to to, to intercept the event execution and then track some metadata information to be processed later. This could be a solution, uh, even though I started to think that is not the, the, the best solution because then what is going to happen, that you will need to replicate this code in all the tasks in your pipeline. So there, there, is, there, is, there is there will be a lot of code repetition. For this is I started to think instead a different way. Like now we have a Navent completion handler that is workflow complete. We could have other uh, completion handler, other event handler in this way. So a generic definition for all the processes in the pipeline. But this would be better because this way, just a single point, would be possible to capture all this event in all processes. So it would be a centralized uh, management of this event. The only side effect is approach that would be difficult to, to capture the context, the variable defined in the, the task context, like in this case. In this case, I can say I want to track the period D that is a variable defined here. Instead, in this other model, I, would, I still could be able to capture this variable, but it's not clear from where it's coming from, so it's a bit fragile. Maybe there is still something to, to refine in both in this approach. Now, this is another, there's a lot of requests for this feature. One, the problem that there is now in Nextflow is that when you execute a big pipeline, all the, the temporary data is accumulated in this work directory. That is supposed to be deleted at the end of the execution. But when a power line is very big, this directory tends to become very big as well. It can be a limiting factor. And also, the other problem is that when you delete this data, you lose the ability to resume the pipeline execution. 
Sunday India would be to progressively clean up the pipeline while it's running, while it's executing, it is executing. Uh, for example, if a task is successfully executing, then trigger the execution of the following task. And when also this task is completed, I can delete the temporary result or the upstream task. And then so on. Every time I complete a stage, I can clean up the, the, upstream, the upstream stage. The difficult part is that when you are in a situation like this, maybe at some point this fail, and you cannot delete this because there is a dependency with a task that, uh, that has crashed and you want to recover. And the, the, the problem that I'm facing now is how to identify, how to distinguish between these two, between, let's say, the tasks that are completed but not uh, in a definite manner, the meaning that they still have dependencies, and also how to, to jump at this point when there is the need, the, need, the need to resume the execution. Because now when you resume a pipeline execution or next flow, always start from the beginning and then just keep the, all the tasks previously completed. Instead, using this approach, we cannot start anymore, anymore from this point. But we will need to start from this point. So to remove that piece of code is not so, so easy. I'm, I still need to work to find a way to, to manage this situation. Then another idea is to how to manage the a better way to, to, to manage the, the resource allocation or the pipeline execution already in Xflow are many different ways to, to define uh, the computer resources that are needed for uh, the execution of a task. You can define a static manner like this, or you can define even a dynamic manner that allows you to, to increase dynamically the requirement for resources if your task is failing, and then you can try to execute the task with more memory and more time. This is working fine, but still not the, the, the best way, because uh, ideally we would like to use exactly the resources that are needed for a specific task. Here the idea is to use a prediction model. So just to say, I want to use time and memory in an automatic manner, and then what is going to happen then? We launch the execution on the pipeline, and the first and jobs are used to train a model fetching, gathering the real metrics by the task execution, and then using this model, we could try, we could predict the requirement for the following task execution. Uh, this should be not so hard to, to implement, and I think it would be very, very powerful. Then what else? This is a very big problem. I think the feature request number one in Nextflow, the ability to compose many workflow together. You have, for example, two projects. Uh, you develop independently, and at some point you have the need, okay, I want to run together in a single script and be running other custom, custom, custom logic. How to do that? One idea is to embed the execution of these two independent projects like a special process, is missing on less. Like a special process that launch the execution of sub workflow. This is it's not so easy. The, 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 the complex part is that this is not sequential code. So when you launch sub workflow, there is there is the need to manage also all the parallelization, the sub workflow, and the interaction with the other workflow. And this is one problem. The other problem is. Practically, also on the level of the syntax, how to manage the input and the output that are required by the subworkflow. So before, before generally what we do here, we just define, I need this file or more than one file, give a name, and then use this name in the script that is below. Instead here, I have no ability, uh, at least not a direct way to bind the input file with a subworkflow input file. And the same thing, there is not a direct way to, to, to bind the output with the output channel. So this is something on which I'm struggling to, to find a, a, a nice solution. Then, other ideas would be to have better integration in different data sources, in particular with uh, bioinformatic data, data sources like uh, NCBI uh, sequence reader Kai. So you just give an identifier 
or a read, or a project, and Nextflow automatically downloads all the data for you. That will simplify a lot of things. And the same thing with the Global Alliance uh, HTS GAT. This is a, a similar standard that allows you to retrieve data given identi an identifier. Along the same line, also to have uh, the support, native support for big uh, data sources like uh, AWS Satino or Google Big Table to uh, enable the, the, the tool to interact better with these uh, cloud databases. And finally, also with domain specific databases with IRA. So there are many different levels in which Nextflow could play much better interacting, integrating data, data, data sources and data set and databases. Another thing is this topic of hybrid deployments. What do they mean for that? Already in, since the last release, it was maybe not communicated, not from, um, communicated in a proper way, Nextflow is able to run the same workflow in different environment. You could run a piece of your pipeline in a local cluster with LARM, Maybe at some point there is a piece of your pipeline that needs a special GPU requirement that you don't have in the local cluster, you can deploy in the AWS batch. The same execution, not using two different pipeline instances. Uh, it is a very cool feature also because uh, I imagine scenario in which we have clinical data that must be local, but also you have a part of your pipeline that can run with public data, so you can mix the two things. Or maybe there is already, yes, data in the cloud, so instead of downloading the data, you can run directly your job in our AWS patch and just fetch the result. This is already implemented, but I'm expecting what? The need to have not just a local cluster and a cloud environment, but, but maybe a local cluster and multi-cloud environment or multi-cloud infrastructure. So having the, the ability to have the same pipeline uh, running different um, part of the pipeline in different infrastructure and in different cloud uh, deployments. That could be another extension that in which uh, I would like to work. And finally, another books. Another books are more and more popular, um, are used uh, by many people to prototype a uh, piece of code, pipeline, and whatever. <laughs> so the idea is to make Nextflow also friendly in this environment. And so for this, we have a, a prototype implementation that I now would like to, to show on fly. Imagine then you have a, your Jupyter environment, way too big. And then what is nice now, you have also, other than the Python uh, kernel, there is also an Xflow kernel. And then you can use this to run the usual code. Usual process full. Then there is an output. Wait. Let's file x into result. And then this is doing something. But now, just this. Oopla. And then I, I want to print the result. <coughs> print line. I could run. <coughs> using the, the usual run command, it is print the task execution. And at some point, maybe an internal pipeline <coughs> can become a Jupyter notebook. This is the, the, the pipeline we saw this morning, in which each, uh, each Jupyter cell is a piece of the pipeline. So I could run the first part in which I declare the, the channels, then there is the index process, and then run salmon. It's doing something. Okay, okay, already at the quantification step. So this could be a nice way to prototype a pipeline in this environment, uh, even though it would be even better to integrate them what we a uh, better way to immediately visualize the data produced by, by the pipeline. This is multi qc step execution. Please take a bit more. <coughs> then what I imagine here that automatically this print me the, the multi qc report, now I need to open manually, but we could try to think a way to automatically to, to, to render the result of the pipeline execution. 
And this is the MTGC report. Okay. Uh, so there are really a lot of things for which we are going to work. Um, my, my, my main point is that what well, the genomic data is continuing to increase and basically is exploding. And what I'm expecting, as it's pretty clear, is going to happen. The data will be fragmented and sealed in many different public organizations, private organizations, cluster, whatever. <clears throat> and another problem that we are going to have to have a in a scenario in which we are going to have much more heterogeneous computing environment, public clouds, on-premises cluster, HPC, interacting other books, and the data solution, I don't think, is going to have a, a platform covering all these scenarios. Instead, I think we are going to need more and more portable workflow and hybrid computing environment that are able to, to run different uh, in different environment in the same manner. So basically, what is the, the division next flow? Enabling portability and also enabling multi-cloud deployment on the same pipeline in different environment. And so in conclusion, to, to remain the metaphor, uh, the icon, you know, this is going to, to look like more to a trial running, more people are joining, and uh, yes, then it's not a race, but it's just a way to, to stay together and to, to run toward a common goal. So this was just the idea um, of the presentation. And to conclude, so, so I want to say thanks to Saturday Night Dijon. Fortunately, he could not join today. Then obviously Damiana and Anna for the organization, and then also Brendan Buffer, the sponsor of the event. Thank you.